In embracing the teachings of Lao Tzu and the wisdom of the world, we are not just adopting a philosophical stance, but a way of life. One where we respect the flow, understand the power of persistence, recognize the strength and softness, and above all, trust the journey. For in the end, like water, we will find our way, shaping hearts and carving destinies, one gentle ripple at a time. As we traverse the landscape of thought, from the whispering pines of ancient China to the bustling laboratories and lecture halls of 20th century psychology, there emerges a fascinating conflict. The wisdom of Wu Wei, as it meets modern psychological understanding, finds a vibrant echo in a term that's piqued the interest of thinkers, athletes, artists and professionals alike, the flow state. Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, a pioneering figure in positive psychology, introduced the concept of flow to the wider world through his groundbreaking research. He describes flow as a state of complete immersion in activity, wherein an individual is so engrossed that everything else seems to fade away. Time appears to walk, self-consciousness diminishes, and all that matters is the character. In Csikszentmihalyi's own words, Flow is a space in which people are so involved in an activity that nothing else seems to matter. The experience itself is so enjoyable that people will do it even at great cost for the sheer sake of being. At the heart of those three ways in the flow space lies the concept of effortlessness, not in the sense of lack of expression, but as a harmonious alignment that removes the sensation of strength. When one is in a flow state, there isn't a feeling of trying hard. Instead, actions and decisions arise spontaneously, guided by intuition and experience. This mirrors the teachings of Wu Wei, where actions are in alignment with the nature of the self and the universe, transcending the realm of first effort. Present moment awareness is another common thread weaving through both philosophies. In the flow state, individuals are deeply anchored in the now. They aren't distracted by past regrets or future anxiety. Every ounce of their attention is riveted on the present task. Similarly, Wu Wei emphasizes the importance of moving with the natural rhythms of the present moment, unburdened by the weights of past and future. The environment and our alignment with it play a pivotal role in both concepts. In Csikszentmihalyi's flow, an individual's skills are perfectly matched with the challenge at hand. There's a harmonious balance where neither boredom from a task being too easy nor anxiety from a task being too hard can prevail. This equilibrium resonates deeply with the way's call for aligned action, where one acts in harmony with the external environment, neither overreaching nor underperforming. A particularly fascinating overlap is this transcendence of the self. In the throes of a flow state, the ego, with all its insecurities and self-consciousness, dissolves. One becomes the action they are performing, be it thinking, running, writing, or any other activity. This dissolution of the self offers a profound sense of fulfillment and contentment. In the embrace of Wu Wei, a similar transcendence is observed. By aligning with the Tao, the way of the universe, one moves beyond the narrow confines of the self. There's a melding into a larger tapestry, a harmonious union with the world around, which brings about deep inner peace and satisfaction. In the realms of modern psychology, the flow state has been linked to heightened creativity, increased productivity, and enhanced well-being. From athletes breaking records to artists crafting masterpieces, the fingerprints of flow are evident. Csikszentmihalyi's research provides a scientific framework to what ancient Taoist sages intuited centuries ago. Both perspectives, despite the vast chasm of time and culture between them, advocate for a life of harmony, alignment, and joyful immersion. In the echoes between Wu Wei and the flow state, we witness a testament to the universality of certain truth. Whether articulated through the poetic metaphors of Lao Tzu 
or the empirical research of Chiksen and Hali, the message remains consistent. True fulfillment and excellence arise not from strained effort, but from harmonious alignment with oneself, the past, and the world. In the vast mosaic of human civilizations, each culture has painted its unique stroke, shaped by geography, history, and collective aspiration. As we shift our lens westward from the tranquil banks of ancient Chinese wisdom, we encounter a markedly different ethos. Here, the drumbeat of doing reverberates with unwavering intensity. But this tireless march, while propelling societies to dizzying heights, also casts long shadows of exhaustion and ennui. Let's dive into this dynamic, understanding its origin, its implications, and its challenges. From the towering skyscrapers that scrape the heavens to the unceasing hum of metropolises that never sleep, the Western world is a testament to human condition. Historically, this part of the world has lionized the idea of action. The American dream, for instance, encapsulates this sentiment. With hard work, determination, and a bit of luck, anyone can climb the ladder of success. It's an ethos of manifest destiny, of conquering frontiers, both external and internal. Renaissance Europe saw a burst of creativity and exploration, celebrating human potential and individualism. The subsequent Industrial Revolution further entrenched the idea of ceaseless productivity, with machines and men working around the clock, transforming societies and economies. In the modern era, this celebration of action has found new avatars. The Silicon Valley startup culture, with its hustle hard mantra, the self help industry's emphasis on goal setting and achievement, and even our social media landscapes that reward constant engagement, all echo the same message to be is to do. But like Icarus, soaring ever higher on waxen wings, this relentless pursuit has its perils. The consequences are manifold, affecting individuals and societies at large. Once considered a fringe phenomenon, burnout is now recognized as a legitimate syndrome by health bodies like the World Health Organization. It's characterized by emotional exhaustion, cynicism, and reduced efficacy in work. This isn't merely tiredness, it's a profound depletion of the human spirit. The pressure to be always on, always performing, and always reaching for the next milestone has turned stress into a ubiquitous companion for many. Chronic stress, as numerous studies suggest, has debilitating effects on physical health, mental well-being, and overall life satisfaction. Ironically, the obsession with constant action often leads to inefficiency. The myth of multitasking, the inability to disconnect, and the erosion of deep, focused work means that while we might be busier than ever, we aren't necessarily more productive. The quality of output, creativity, and innovation often suffers in the relentless churn of activity. Amidst the endless hustle, there's a creeping sense of existential void. Many begin to question the purpose of their incessant efforts. Is it merely for material accumulation, social validation, or is there a deeper meaning to life that gets obscured in the blinding dust of constant movement? The Western emphasis on doing has undoubtedly led to remarkable advancements, innovations, and improvements in living standards. But as with all things, balance is crucial. The pendulum, which has swung towards relentless action, might need some recalibration. Eastern philosophy, with their emphasis on being, on harmony, and on aligned action, like the concept of new way we explored, offer a counterpoint. They invite a reconsideration of our relentless pursuit, suggesting that sometimes in letting go of forced effort, in tuning into the rhythms of nature and life, and in embracing stillness amidst the storm, we might find not just peace, but also a more profound, sustainable, and joyous productivity. As our world becomes ever more interconnected, there's an opportunity, a necessity even, to engage in a cross-cultural dialogue, to understand the strengths and limitations of different worldviews, and weave together a tapestry that draws from the best of both. 
in this synthesis, there's hope for a future where achievement and well-being walk hand in hand, where the rivers of action and introspection merge, leading us to shores of greater understanding and fulfillment. In the luminous flow of ancient wisdom, abstract concepts often float like a ball of clouds. Their beauty and depth are undeniable, but how do we tether these lofty notions to the grounded realities of our daily lives? How can one infer the serenity and wisdom of new way amid deadlines, digital distractions, and never-ending to-do lists? Let's embark on this journey, seeking tangible strategies inspired by new way, enabling us to navigate our fast-paced world with grace and purpose. The Grace of Letting Go By letting it go, it all gets done. The world is won by those who let it go. But when you try and try, the world is beyond the winning. Lao Tzu One of the most potent lessons from Blue Wei is recognizing the power of non-action, especially when action doesn't align with the natural world. In our everyday life, this can translate into understanding when to pause, step back, or even abandon the task. For example, if you're facing a creative block or are entangled in a persistent disagreement with someone, sometimes it's best to step away for a moment, take a break, and allow space for clarity to emerge. This isn't defeat or avoidance, it's strategic non-action, allowing the natural force of things to take over. In the workspace, this might mean knowing when to delegate or when to leave space for a colleague to come to a realization on their own. In personal relationships, it might be choosing not to react impulsively, allowing emotions to settle before responding. Cultivating patience. Nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. Understanding the rhythm of life, trees don't sprout overnight. Seasons transition with an innate rhythm, and the cosmos moves in its time. Wu Wei teaches us that like nature, our lives too have a rhythm. Embracing patience doesn't mean being passive or lackadaisical. It means acknowledging that not everything is within our immediate control. Whether you're awaiting the germination of a seed you've planted, the fruition of a project, or the evolution of a personal relationship, patience becomes a powerful ally. It provides the buffer against anxiety, the urge to interfere, or to hasten processes that naturally require time. In a practical sense, this could translate to not constantly checking for responses after sending an important email, giving space to new team members to adjust and align with company culture, or understanding that personal growth and learning have their own place to think for each individual. The paradox of overethics Trying to control the future is like trying to take the master carpenter's place. When you handle the master carpenter's tools, chances are that you'll cut your hands. In our obsession with results, we sometimes believe that putting in more effort, working longer hours, taking on more tasks, cooking harder, will be a better outcome. We wait challenges with me. Imagine trying to write with a pen by a plan of special session. Not only will the writing be messy, but you might also damage the paper or break the pen. Similarly, over effort in our endeavors can lead to burnout, reduce efficiency, and can sometimes even sabotage the very goal we're trying to achieve. Over preparation for an event might make you anxious and less adaptable to changes. Pushing the team relentlessly might lead to decreased morale, innovation, and productivity. In personal spheres, pressuring a relationship to progress at an unnatural pace might strain or break it. The teaching here is to find the balance between action and inaction, ensuring our efforts align with the natural progression of things. It's about trusting the process, giving our best, but also understanding that excessive force is not just unnecessary, but often detrimental. Embracing the lessons of Wu Wei in our contemporary world might seem like a challenge, but these age-old teachings aren't in opposition to action. They are a refined approach to it. 
It's about harmonizing with the flow of life, understanding when to act, when to wait, and when to retreat. As we integrate these lessons, we find that the wisdom of the ancients can indeed illuminate our modern times, guiding us towards a life of balance, fulfillment, and profound understanding. Across the tapestry of human experience, countless narratives showcase the principles of Wu Wei and action, even if the protagonists of these tales might not explicitly cite this Eastern philosophy. From boardrooms to sports arenas, artists' studios to personal narratives, there's an abundance of evidence suggesting that sometimes less truly is more. Let's traverse these varied landscapes, discovering stories where effortless action made all the difference. The inception of the three ends close to the end. One of the most iconic products to emerge from the corporate world, the post-it note, was, in essence, a byproduct of an experiment gone wrong. Dr. Spencer Silver, a scientist at 3M in 1968, was attempting to develop a super strong adhesive. Instead, he accidentally created a low-tack, reusable, pressure-sensitive adhesive. For years, this mistake lay dormant, with no apparent reason. It wasn't until 1974 when a colleague, Art Fry, realized its potential as a solution to his perpetually slipping bookmarks in his new book. By not forcing an immediate application for the failed adhesive, EM eventually introduced the product in 1980 that would revolutionize offices worldwide, the Coke had Silver been singularly focused and discarded what didn't match his initial aim, the world might never have had this indispensable tool. But he did let it be. In the turbulent waters of creativity, sometimes stepping back allows the tides of inspiration to flow freely. During a period of internal disagreement and external pressures, Paul McCartney dreamt of his deceased mother who told him, let it be. This dream not only inspired the song but also represented a philosophy that McCartney and the rest of the Beatles began to embrace. Instead of forcing creativity amidst chaos, they allowed things to unfold naturally. The result? One of their most iconic songs and albums. It's a testament to the power of surrendering to the moment letting go of the need to control and allowing creativity to blossom in its own time. Roger Bannister and the Four Minute Mile Before 1954, the notion of running a mile in less than four minutes was considered impossible, but Roger Bannister, a medical student and runner, approached the challenge with a different philosophy. While many athletes were increasing their training regimen, Bannister decreased too. He believed in quality over quantity, ensuring that each training session was purposeful and aligned. He did not force himself into excessive routines or succumb to overtraining. With a focused and minimalist approach on May 6, 1954, Bannister did the unthinkable. He ran a mile in 3 minutes 59.4 seconds. His accomplishment was not just about physical prowess, but also about understanding the rhythm of his body and knowing when to push and when to rest. The story of Julia and the unplanned journey. Julia, a marketing professional, had meticulously planned a solo trip to Italy. Every hour was accounted for, every site to be visited listed. But on her second day, she lost her itinerary to a sudden gust of wind in Venice. With no internet access and a dead phone battery, she had a choice, panic or embrace the unexpected. Choosing the latter, she allowed the city to guide her. She meandered through alleys, discovered hidden courtyards, experienced impromptu opera performances, and forged friendships with locals. The trip became not about seeing, but about experiencing. By not trying to control every moment, Julia found herself immersed in authentic experiences that no itinerary could have offered. It was an embodiment of Wu Wei, moving effortlessly with the flow of life. 
these stories spanning different domains echo a singular truth. There exists a magic in not forcing outcomes, in understanding when to act and when to do it. They highlight the harmony that arises when humans, despite their innate desire to control and predict, align themselves with the more organic, often serendipitous flow of existence. Whether in the throes of innovation, the swirl of creativity, the adrenaline of sports, or the unpredictability of personal journey, the principles of Wu Wei shimmer through, teaching us timeless lessons about balance, patience, and the unparalleled beauty of letting things be. In the dizzying whirlwind of our modern age, where the relentless drumbeat for ceaseless effort and pursuit resonates in every corner, lies a profound, almost radical counter-narrative. The gentle whisper of Wu Wei, beckoning us towards the allure of effortlessness. It feels almost audacious, this idea of non-doing, especially when set against the backdrop of a world that equates busyness with work and hustle with success. Yet, as we've traversed the vast landscapes of history, business, art, sports, and personal stories, a resonant theme emerges. It's the discovery that, paradoxically, it's in the spaces between our actions, in our pauses, in our yielding, that the true essence of life often reveals itself. It's in recognizing that sometimes, the most potent action is in not acting, in allowing life's river to carry us forward, rather than tirelessly swimming against the current. However, this isn't a call for passivity or an invitation to abandon our goals and aspirations. On the contrary, it's a nuanced dance between knowing when to lead and when to follow, between steering the ship and letting the winds guide us. It's about redefining our understanding of success, not as the destination arrived at through sheer force, but as the journey undertaken with grace, alignment, and intuitive wisdom. Yet this discourse would be incomplete without your voice. As we conclude this exploration, we extend an invitation to each of you to share your tales of serendipity, of moments when non-doing illuminated your path, of times when letting go led you to destinations you'd never envisioned, and more so, to experiment with the principles of Wu Wei in your daily endeavor. For in this collective sharing and mutual experimentation, we not only enrich our individual lives, but weave together a tapestry of experiences, painting a world where effortlessness isn't a luxury, but an exquisite art form we all have the privilege to practice. In embracing Wu Wei, perhaps we'll find that the most profound fruits of life aren't shouted from mountain tops, but whispered in the silent corridors of understanding, waiting for those willing to listen to discover. Let us embark on this journey together, carving paths illuminated by the gentle glow of effortless action, and in doing so, redefine the contours of a life well lived.
contraption move this around here previously the water the drain can go to the floor so we move them into the wall and so now they're out of the way for the new vanity that will be shown and we put this guy on for some safety Also, the vents were in the way, so we moved the backstop. Put the base down, we got this 
fancy contraption to move this around here. Previously, the water and the drainage were under the floor, so we moved them into the wall. And so now they're out of the way for the new vanity that will be shown. And we put this guy on for safety. I hate my niece, she a bitch. <laughs> Can she be bragging about shit? She know I can't do. I got back home, go with some old camera. Old camera, guess what? I passed the third grade. And I'm like, I don't care, bitch. If you were so goddamn smart, you did it twice like I did. I only did it twice though because I couldn't read. That ain't funny, bitch. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have got Spirit. Or is it uh, uh, Asian philosophy called a cheap story? A little motherfucker. 